This is uh, Lou Paints, and I'm the miniature painting coach. And this is my miniature painting vlog where I work on things that I'm at. And we are still working on this Betronian sorceress. And I'm a little bit worried because I just realized that my um, clothing is bouncing off this green light towards my face. So I need to be extra careful that I don't um, accidentally. Uh, bounce off these lights to the miniature so when I'm painting like I get uh, <laughs> like like there's a green uh, rim light on, on my jaw here so this will be interesting I wonder if that will affect the miniature all right anyways let's get started um, this kind of place is here and as usual you guys can kind of see uh, how my paints uh, are and you can see my you can see all the uh, my, my hand movements over here on my brush so uh, like there's nothing really hidden about the way I paint all right so let's just go ahead and begin now so the last time where we kind of stopped was um, we were kind of putting this miniature together and uh, we were detailing and so uh, we sped up the video last time to kind of show off um, how how do I go on to blend and make the subtle little changes on this miniature. Now this is some glare from this uh, light to the side, so I'm just gonna dim that down a little bit. And we actually have accentuated most of the details on this model. It's still not as clean as I like to be yet, particularly because uh, when you're using a wet blending technique at the bottom with so many colors. Like at the beginning, I was just using uh, pretty much the uh, cyan, magenta, and yellow colors. So I pretty much had to mix all of my colors on my own, so which is why it's as messy as it is, and it's so con time consuming. But the benefit I gained from that was that I now really understand the uh, relativity and the relationships between the colors, so I can get this kind of like um, this kind of skin tone that moves into the green, and then what it kind of like goes into a fade gray before it moves into a blue or it bounces off with other um, parts of the clothing in order to get this particular kind of lighting to it. Because remember like the the the, the environment has so much uh, play, uh, colors playing with one another so there's bound to be a little bit of reflective light on the face from the clothing or from the lighting that's above. Now in this um, episode we won't be speeding things up because we will be focusing on the oops my palette is just way too close let's just bring it back there um a little bit further we will be focusing on the true metallic metal base and um whatever i need to do to get her staff to pop out um i've decided in order to contrast the sword and the uh um the the staff and that's to make this rod a completely wood so that there's more red on the miniature and there's more, more warm colors to balance out the green and to really make that green um, show up because right now as it is if the, if we go ahead and like if we if we zoom out the whole miniature here and we really take a look at uh, what we have as um, our colors are spread out we have a good green over here however um, we do have a blue here and we have bits of red uh, and with the sword later on when we finish drawing it it's still going to be for the most part a very desaturated color except for the parts where it's directly reflecting her blonde hair and the green from her clothing so we want to make sure to with this staff we want to really accentuate the lighting on it and we can't really accentuate the lighting on it if it's kind of like an iron color because it's, then it just will blend uh, into like a gray or metallic so we're gonna work it with a brown because a brown is a gray color that's going to allow us to really uh, bring up the other colors in the scene so let me kind of demonstrate what I'm talking about over here real quick uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and take uh, whoops let's just take this bigger brush so I'm 
we're gonna bring in a new brush so this brush is a uh, Ashley series uh, a66 it's a two size brush I don't really um, care too much about this brush nor is it a brand that I'm, I use frequently um, and that's because I just I just don't so now you can see me just kind of slop on this um, in the form of an ink and that's because all my paints are so heavily saturated um, if you've been looking at the prior episodes I've just been mixing most of my paints um, in a form of a glaze especially after detailing phase and even during my uh, wet blending phase and because I'm using heavy body acrylics to mix them um, the benefit that I get is these really heavy colors that I get to work with. They're really saturated, they're really intense, and I can thin them down as much as I want without losing much. Now, the 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 uh, con of that uh, of me working in this way is that it uses more up of my more of my time, and so it it uh, allows me to play with more um, gray colors and to mix those colors well. However, I lose out on both the cartoony colors and the colors that uh, has to do with time. And so, yes, I see after the moment I put on this brown light, it brings the, uh, the color together. So we're going to wet blend this a little bit. Um, we are going to put on more reds at the front here. And we are going to put more uh, browns and greens. Uh, where, where it ought to be so where, where the back here for example um, we've already done in black and that's pretty much a painted on black which is why this part of the model seems so dark like even if I take this light and like I can turn on this light to really shine on the miniature and you guys can see that even with so much bright light that this part is black so that's because I painted this model in such a way to really determine the values of the miniature so you're not looking at like a shadow it's painted on shadow and that's kind of the magic with um, painting miniatures in this way now this rim over here that's showing on the right that's due to the uh, light lamp I have on the right and so if I move it you can see that um, there is the uh, what we call it is specular uh, a specular lighting that's caused by the uh, the actual the, the the light just bouncing off at a particular angle now that's there's a whole bunch of theory I'm not going to get into that so what we're gonna get now doing is that uh, we're going to create the differences between the brown that's in the light and the one that's in the dark so first off the part that's of the brown is going to be mostly portrayed by light is the one down here okay so we're going to add that this in first and we're gonna move it slowly into the uh, into our, uh, towards our skin and we're gonna add it towards here this is where it, the light just kind of ends so this will be our uh, our brown for the most part we're also going to douse this over the head so that we can uh, get a much more finished look and we because our scepter here has already been primed a pretty good um so what was that uh, ye yellow so we i mean i'm using base base coat to yellow and it's been done with uh, a little bit of the value shading to it we will put on this red and later on i will glaze on a blue in order to get the right values for it because right now we we want to prepare the scepter head to be um to to be done with true metallic metal style now again for those who uh, have been listening to some of my uh, blogs over here I have uh, painted transformers in the past and so true metallic metal in the <laughs> transformers world is like pretty much all you do so it's, um, and it comes with varying standards and varying, uh, varying qualities but um, because of my uh, experience working with true metallic metal, I, I'm not so fearful of uh, of working uh, with it in uh, in miniature platform. So we just go ahead and douse this part with that um, red that we have, and we are going to put a little bit more at the front here. We are going to also make sure to bring back that yellow. 
And notice how the yellow with the skin color that I put on here immediately turns to like a a, pr a pretty uh, neutral color, pretty much in the grays. We are also going to add a this violet that I've kind of um, mixed. We're gonna add just a little bit of water, and we're gonna really douse this part of the miniature because it's on the opposite side of where our light is coming from. And we, this is where we want to start putting our violets in. Okay, now because there's so much uh, red here, we want to put a little bit of blue. So let's just go ahead and take this. And I'm just taking the top of this uh, this medium that's kind of uh, separate from skin color. Later on, we're going to have to mix those two together again. Otherwise, the skin uh, pink pigments at the bottom are going to dry up. It's just a matter of a wet palette management. The wet palette management is really important uh, when it comes to um, making sure that your uh, painting process isn't too uh, isn't too <laughs> disturbed all over the place. Okay, so I'm also going to put on this uh, shadow real quick. Put this on. And that, that blue is going to play a huge role in our shadows later on as we keep going along. Actually, I, I, I will go ahead and place a little bit more. Let's just stick this uh, matte real quick. And it's okay to use matte on blue colors like these because it's just going... Like blue colors don't um, dry up as easily. They are generally satin as well. So adding that matte is not going to cause any issues. Just cat fur, of course. And for most of the um, issues that's on my miniature, I realize it's because due to cat fur. <laughs> and there's really nothing I can do about that unless I uh, uh, I get rid of I get rid of my cat, which I'm not going to do. <laughs> okay, so the music was way too loud. Okay, so I'm um, gonna add this. Um, this blue into the hair as well and this so this uh, blue or a much more violet strong violet is um, one that I mixed um, using both magenta and turquoise and you can actually use turquoise and magenta to mix both uh, blue violet indigo anything within this realm um, so I'm just gonna show real quick so because I need to manage my white palette again so first of all we're just gonna uh, revitalize our our skin paint put it in here as well to kinda because this has white in it so you want to make sure to keep that alive and then we're just gonna add it into our um, teal over here because you just want to keep it a little bit fresh over here as well so we can lighten that have several values on that so we don't have to spend time mixing later and we're just gonna take a whole lot of turquoise so I'm just kind of like peeling the turquoise over here I'm just gonna pop it here all right so I have this whole lot of turquoise and it looks like it's a mess and that's fine you can see it kind of moves a little bit into the blue area and then I'm just gonna douse a little bit of ma that magenta and then I'm gonna pop it on here. Like so. You can see already moving into the ultramarine blue and the uh, violet area. And that was really quick the way it just kinda moved into that. I'm just gonna leave that alone. Oh actually I might actually go on more of it with some water and some flow improver that I have here. Just to make a lot of it make a lot of it tick. And then I'm just gonna douse whatever I have over here. And then to create a much more stronger violet from this indigo, uh, I'm just gonna take this magenta over here and take a little bit more, pop it in here. So I get a uh, indigo that's a little bit based on the violet end. Okay, and I'm just gonna leave that. So I have all the uh, the paints that I need. <laughs> In order to work with my grays and my darks, right? So now let's just go ahead and work with our miniature over here. So um, we want to create a rim light because uh, right now, oh wait, wait. So before we create that rim light, more importantly, 
we will need to actually add a, a, a contrast to it. So it's important to create the uh, to create the composition of something that is bright. You need something that is dark to to show the opposition of it, in opposition of force, and opposition of light, opposition of character. And so I'm going to down dim out this uh, scepter into two halves. And let's just kind of zoom that in first. And you can see we already uh, we have something that's so so uh, there's a lot of light going <laughs> lighting going on this miniature. I have to apologize because it's just the matter of the the paint. Uh, and I'm gonna douse in a purple. And the reason why I'm going to douse a purple in is because I'm gonna put on a bluish uh, highlight on the opposite side. So we're gonna just kind of go with it over here. Oops, sorry. Slow down while we're up. And then I'm gonna put here. So we actually have a purple undertone to it, which is really, really good. And we're gonna follow down this, uh, this purple undertone. So in this purple undertone, we're also going to, um, we're gonna make sure to have it at the places where we need so earlier earlier i left this part which was a little bit green a little bit brighter and this is where we can finally uh add in this color and we will see that um it will blend pretty well pretty nicely just uh, need to add a little bit more darker over here to blend it a little bit more smooth all right a bit of magenta Should have that all flow down okay we we'll have a little bit of this green towards the left here in the bottom get that nice little gray that we mixed okay so now you can see okay so the staff looks li really dark now and that's okay we're gonna also put on a magenta uh, just pure magenta over here to the opposite side and remember this is wood that we are going to paint and uh, We are going to work our way up to the highlights. So most of this uh, this stark um, Magenta will be really dimmed down later on so which is why I'm not too worried about uh, it being Whatever it is and it looks looking gray now. That's fine. <laughs> We are also going to place a little bit more yellow on this side. Just so that we get a, a bit of an orange. So now if we look at our rod, uh, our rod just kind of moves. Oops. Take place a little bit of uh, violet under here before the hand. So if we look at our rod, there's a there's a nice little movement from orange all the way to like a blurred dark red, and that's actually what we want. Okay, so let's just go ahead and add our, our highlights at the top here. And we're just gonna add it roughly because again, we are going to go with it true with metallics, and once you add the metallics, most of the color is gonna drop at the top. And so I'm keeping that in mind. You can see that there's a little eye that uh, I've kind of kind of gone ahead and painted. But later we're gonna go over that with uh with like a green. There we go. It's a little bit sharper now. But for now, I'm just gonna make a quick sketch to remind myself that the eye is there by just adding this uh green to it. And I uh, will probably add a green on the opposite side as well over here. It's okay if it floods on to the to the areas in between. We are going to that's just a sketch for now. Okay, so what else can we oh yeah. This part is a little bit too bright, so we'll tone that down. Over here as well. We just want to make sure we get all of these parts done. And this um part of the bottom of the scepter uh that she has we want to make sure to uh, bring in the. Uh, make sure I change the 
autocorrect for a moment. Give me a second. There we go. I gotta make sure I bring in the. Uh, what's that? The uh, brightness and darkness on the opposite side over here. Okay. So we're just gonna go with it in a round. Is it gonna be this dark later on? Not quite yet. In this part, we can place it as iron. Um, just to kind of make make sure it's not completely unnoticeable on the model. But we just want to add our colors in just for now. Just want to add a little bit of red so it mixes it well together. Um, a bit here as well, no need. Oops, sorry. Just going to make sure that we focus the uh, on the model properly. And I do apologize for um, the lack of consistency in uh, these videos because these videos are pro these are like the first videos I have from my YouTube channel and I'm trying a lot of things out at once so over time they'll just get better. And let me see what what else I need to do. Okay, so right now let's let's focus on the rest of the miniature because uh, we've kind of kind of looking on this staff a little bit way too much. This, the staff will need to dry, and uh, once it dries, I'm going to put a coat of matte uh, varnish over it. It's probably from something from Bullet the Hose. It's not too matte. I just need it to be uh, simple enough. And we, uh, while we did wait for that to dry, let's just kind of work on our gray. So we turn around our model, and you can see that there's still, there's still a lot of this model that's uh, not being properly... Um, not not properly smoothed or not properly done yet and it's more it's more matte than it was but essentially because of the metal scalp it doesn't allow for a very easy finish so what we will do is that we will actually go ahead and put on thick paint you know to make our um to make the surface layer of the of the miniature uh easier to work with and so we'll do it at the same time while we put on our um, our undercoat in order to prepare it for the next stage. So I'm just defining where it's darkest on this model. I'm just gonna bring the light closer so that we have uh, something that's a little bit brighter to work with. Pretty much bringing all my lights uh, closer without uh, making sure that it's still diffuse enough so it's not... Um, it's, it's not making the model look too bright okay and then we are going to work with the blues that I've kind of go ahead and made here over here they're thin enough so I'm not going to go in them too too strongly and at this stage we're pretty much just uniting all of the colors that's underneath in small bits and pieces and I think generally what scares people the most about the way I paint is that it looks so messy and it looks so uh, difficult to work with at the especially to at, at the beginning of uh, painting the miniature um, and when it comes to working the uh, the parts of the miniature that are still like in the midst of stuff like people enjoy have to having the comfort of knowing what comes next and painting what essentially looks like it's the next step like you know procedurally but art is not always like that because when you want to work in the fastest way possible when you're trying to explore uh, how you try and get better at your art you are constantly working with um you know, i mean things things that just don't don't look that great so we're just kind of putting on these uh, parts okay just kind of highlighting these parts on the miniature which uh, we don't want to make sure we glaze properly a little bit on these parts later on and we want to make sure to clean everything um, for when we unify them because right now as it is the model does look extremely dirty especially from the back here like how it was at the front uh, before and uh, that's achieved fine there's nothing wrong with that. You can always just repaint. You can always just repaint and always 
just add on uh, whatever I need to add on to the miniature as I go along but uh, right now uh, what the most important thing that I need to do is um, I need to really define the uh, the model appropriately there we go mixing that uh, indigo in so we actually have a good contrast of uh, just kind of look at that Okay, our dress now is a little bit more properly rendered. Putting the purple on at the bottom. Okay, putting the red on here on the opposite side of our grey value. Putting on where it's appropriate. Over here as well. here and neat. Oof, what else? We also want to make sure we get the uh, get the saturated parts of the orange back in. So we're just gonna mix it like this. It's gonna be extremely thin thinned out consistency. We like so. You know, so I'm still working in like large shapes. I'm not working with like smaller ones, not yet. Because this back here is still there's still a lot to be done with it. It's still far from done. Now we can add our this color. It will be a much more brighter gray. You can see here, right? This grey is really nice to work with. I like this grey. I'm gonna add a small little annotation here. On the fingers, which is actually matters a lot to place it here. There the base. We're just making sure we unify all the colors around here. I'm going to add a little bit more of this to darken it towards the left. Okay. Now, after this, we're just going to let it dry and we're going to put several layers of matte to kind of let it seep into the uh, crevices to kind of um, smoothing out everything on this back here because this part of the miniature is actually the most rough and uh, well just not all that great in its molding and we can see that we already have the staff uh, kind of prepared for the next part uh, for the most part anyway so we can see that it's uh, okay is it dry yes it's dry so I can go ahead and go to the next bit which is to kind of place our um, skin tones over it so why skin tones is because uh well i mean skin tones are just make great highlights so we're gonna actually gonna use that uh those skin tones in order to make this uh look like wood so first of all i'm gonna just draw a little bunch of shapes on it really softly nothing too straight actually i do need a little bit more thicker paint so we'll take this and we will go tough on it because I just realized that the um it's actually really this this paints they uh a little bit too thin. Go with it like this. Go with it like this. Just kinda create simple shapes that remind me of wood. They don't need to be too too accurate. Let's look at the back here. In the back, we don't really need to have too many sh shapes or colors. We just need kind of like annotations of it. Okay. 
like this as well. This is how I'm stipling it because these are not my focal points of the miniature. I don't need it to be too, too focused. Okay. We are going to thin out the paint a little bit more so we have something a little more thicker. Okay, one here. One here. Simple, easy. Okay. So that stuff is going to be what it is. Okay, and later on we will go ahead and put on our glaze over it for that wood now okay so what's next well we have a little bit more time so let's just go ahead and frame the uh, miniature because we actually haven't taken our time to to frame this miniature properly so I'm gonna plug it off here and uh, let's just kind of plop off this miniature and screw it a little bit from this thing that I'm using it to hold just kind of dig into that to give me some room and well, we just kind of do off our fin our framing for this, particularly because each time I frame this, I don't really do its uh, due respect to it because we keep working on the base uh, pretty raw. So I'm just putting it like so, pretty thickly actually. I need to be pretty thick. We might have to go through a coat on this black. Okay. Because we want to help define the uh, the darkest darks on this uh, miniature. Kind of bringing it to him again. So, and by the way, um, this miniature has been a really good exercise for my uh, color and light and shadows we're working on something so small because when it comes to painting like canvases and uh, just general things in art like those things i'm so used to working on are so huge that um, i can just kind of take my time and especially for 2d drawings or for digital artwork there's a lot of ways to just kind of speed up the process you don't need to wait but with paints there's a lot of um, thinking about what's the best way to layer things out to make things easier and that's just kind of like what I like about traditional painting over um, digital painting or 3D modeling it's because you, you you don't have as much freedom so you're forced to learn your fundamentals a lot more better now when you when I move over to, to digital platforms it becomes ridiculously easy to uh, kind of move around and it's at the cost of me being able to hold and grasp my artwork I mean for a painting that's I can put on the wall it's um I don't mind digital but you know sculptures are where it's at like sculptures they just last I love them they look great and uh, there's real value in uh, having sculptures around it's it's really it becomes really immersive and it really stays uh, in life which is why I love them okay so let's just kind of take a look at our miniature here for a moment before we kind of turn this off um, right now as it is I'd say I'm actually pretty glad about this miniature it's very very um, it's not clean like the paint job is not clean or whatnot it was a very good it, it has been a very good uh, learning experience for me and from this point on I'm mostly just uh, cleaning up the model all right so uh, I'll take some time and I'll just go ahead and clean up some of the parts and we'll see you in the next video remember to learn from others to discover more of yourself and to loop